Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Danny Steinberg. Uh, I'm a plant pathologist working in the Vulcan Institute, Institute in Israel. The work that I will describe today uh, was primarily carried out by Adolfo Levin, who did his postdoc with Dr. Uri Miao from Vulcan and myself. The mineral nutrition status of trees markedly affect the response to plant pathogens. Today, we will focus on, uh, in, in apple fruits. Apple is the largest deciduous crop under cultivation in Israel. And most of the area is cultivated with red delicious cultivars, about 30% of the area. If we, if we cut open an apple, we will see it inner parts. We can see the flesh, the meso mesoderm, the loculus, which is the seed core region, seed or core region, and the endocarp wall. So this is a healthy apple. Occasionally, when we will cut an apple, we see something like this. What we see here is that the core region is filled with a fungus. We see the hyphae, the color is white or black. And actually, this is not very, very bad because we still can eat this apple. But occasionally, this is called a moldy core. But occasionally, the, the fungus penetrates the flesh, the mesoderm, and then rot develops in the mesoderm. And we cannot eat this kind of apple. This, this is called core rot. The problem is that we core rot cannot be seen from the outside. The apple fruit seems healthy and normal as usual. And eating a food like that will uh, cause the people not to buy apples, very delicious apples anymore. So the question is how and when this happens and obviously what can be done to reduce, reduce the problem. Quite a lot is known about these pathosystems. It is known that the causal, causal agent is a fungus called Alternaria alternata. Alternaria penetrates in, and infects the blossom during uh, at the blooming. Then it grows towards the core region when the fruit gets developed colonizes the small fruits. And when the fruits are large, large it develops in the, the core region and, and produce and, and cause moldy core. As time, as time passes, the fruits mature and alternaria may develop uh, in the meso mesoderm causing core rot. According to this scenario, uh, moldy core is directly related to, co to core rot. Nevertheless, the, there is a large variation between years, between orchards, and even between individual trees in the same orchard in the incidence of core rot. So not much is known for, uh, about the causes for this variation. This we website from New Mexico State University, so it may be in hint. What's written here is that moldy core is primarily a problem during years with light food set. They, are, uh, they did not present any experimental evidence or explanation. We decided to check if this is true also for, for a corot. And during the year of 2008, it was 12 years ago, uh, we found 20 trees with high yield and heavy yield, and 20 trees with, with light yield in one of the orchard in the north. Uh, these trees were in the same orchard. Uh, after maturity, uh, we sampled 100 fruit from each tree, cut it all, and checked the incidence of moldy core, of, of, of core rot. And indeed, we found out that trees with light yield it had significantly higher core rot incidence than trees with heavy yield. As I indicated, these trees were in the same orchard. And the, the reason for the difference, difference in their uh, yield was due to alternate yielding, and which is quite normal in, uh, in our uh, orchard. And it causes natural variation in yield. Because it is alternate yielding, uh, what we did, al al alternate bearing, what we did is in the following year, we followed the same trees and harvested and estimated the yield. And indeed, the trees that in the first year, 2008, had light year, in the following year had higher yield than the other trees. When we sampled fruit from these trees, it turned that the incidence of corot diverged. 
the one that in the first year with higher disease incidence, now the lawyer lower and then we continued to do the same in the year 2010, 2010 and 2011 and on the right side you can see the uh, reflection of the alternate debearing of the yield on the left side it can be seen that in every year on the same trees whenever the yield was light corrode incidence was high and vice versa this was natural variation in yield uh, then we decided to try to impose variation uh, experimentally, and we did that by, by thinning. Uh, we decided to have five different treatments, and we did different thinning uh, treatments, starting from very, very few fruits remaining uh, that remained on the trees, 50 fruit, about 50 fr fruits per tree, and up to 500 and more fruits per, per tree. Uh, thinning was carried out soon after fruit set, on, on, as you see on fruit sets. We did four experiments like that, and the experiment was successful. We succeeded to have large vari variation in, in yield by the end of the season between the first and the second and the fifth treatment. After tr fruit maturity, we harvested 100 tree fruits from each tree and uh, recorded the modicore incidence. As you can see, there was no uh, much, no, not great in, uh, differences in uh, modicore between uh, incidence be between the different treatments. In a way, it was expected because as I indicated, the infection of Alternaya uh, occurred during blo blooming and we did our thing much, much, uh, much later. Nevertheless, there was a different, significant difference in the core rot incidence between the treatments. And as in the natural variation, whenever yield was low, corrode incidence was high, and vice versa. This happened in three out of the four experiments. Since we had the data, we plotted the relationship between yield dot for each one of, of the trees and corrode incidence of each one of these trees. And indeed, we found this very highly significant relationship. We chose that high yield is uh, accompanied by a low core incidence and, and low yield is carried out as high uh, core rot incidence. In a way, uh, trees with high yield are, uh, have their resistance response to this disease and trees with low yield have susceptible response to this disease. Obviously, this is not genetic resistance because all of the trees are in the same orchard and you know, the same cultivar. So this is physiological resistance. So now the scenario that I showed you previously changed a little bit. Antarana still penetrates in insects in the blossoms, develops and uh, colonizes the uh, root, the core region in small fruitlet. But then there are two different situations. In the first situation, Antarana penetrates endocarp wall and cause a core rot, and this is what we call susceptible response. And in the others, it remains restricted to the core region and at the end of the system, there is the, the, the symptom is of moldico. And this is the, what uh, we call here resistant response. So the objective of our study was to elucidate the mechanism that it uses physiological resistance in heavy yielding trees. And then to use this knowledge uh, to develop means for disease suppression. Let's start with the first objective. Uh, so what I showed you is that in susceptible trees, Alternaya penetrates the endocarp wall, invade the metal sterm, and induce corrod. So our first hypothesis was that the key is the endocarp wall. More specifically, is that the calcium concentration in the endo endocarp wall governs the response of Alternaya to Alternaya. If the calcium concentration is low, then we'll get susceptible response. And if the calcium concentration is high, the fungus will re remain restricted to the core region, and then we'll get what uh, we call resistance response. Why did we choose a uh, calcium? We chose calcium because uh, we know that alternate alternata secreted uh, extra cellular uh, poly, uh, pectolytic enzymes, which dissolve the middle lamella. 
And also know that high calcium concentration in, in membranes and cell walls increases the stability to extracellular pectoric enzymes and reduces fungal infections. So this is why uh, we chose we hypothesize that calcium is involved. But how yield load affects calcium concentration in, in the fruits? Uh, we know that calcium is transported in plata within the xylem vessels, and the driving force of calcium movement, movement is at the transpiration rate. Then yield load and vegetative growth affects calcium movement and partitioning between the leaves and the fruits. In theory, uh, in year with or trees with a light yield load, the vegetative growth is vigorous, as you can see in, in uh, this photo. Uh, this happens on, on in uh, off years, and in that case, we expect that uh, the uh, calcium concentration in the fruit will be low. And when yield load is heavy, the growth will be limited as happened in off years, and we expect that the calcium concentration in the fruit will be high. This is what we uh, expect from, from the literature. Since we, have, we, since we have the data, we could calculate or estimate the relationship between uh, yield load and cal calcium concentration in the end of Papua. And indeed, as expected, you see that there is a straight line showing that in, uh, when yield load is low, Calcium concentration in the endocarpot is, is also low and, and vice versa. Next, we examine the rate of relation between calcium concentration and core rot incidence. And as expected, uh, we received this graph showing that in low calcium concentration, core uh, rot incidence is high. And in high uh, calcium concentration in the endocarp, is a, a followed by a low core rot incidence. So this is what we call resistant response, and the other what we call susceptible response. Nevertheless, you see that uh, although the, this relationship is, is uh, significant, you see a high variation here in the data points. Uh, this means that the system is not so simple as I described. Uh, what causes the variation? Uh, a little bit more information about cal calcium transport. So calcium uh, is transported into apple fruit primarily at early stages of fruit development. When the fruit is at, at the middle stage of the development, uh, the xylem vessels are in misfunction and, uh, and uh, water does not uh, go inside anymore and also calcium is not uh, penetrating anymore. So uh, calcium concentration is in, in large apples is lower than small apples because they are at a certain point of time, calcium it does not penetrate anymore. So again, theoretically, if the fruits are small, we expect high calcium concentration in the fruit. And if, if a fruit is large, we expect low calcium concentration. It should be noted that this, this reflects nicely the relationship between yield load and fruit size. Whenever yield low is heavy, Many, many fruits are small, and whenever yield load is light, many, many of the fruits on this tree are, are large. So it fits nicely what we saw a moment ago. To test that, we divided the, the fruit into two groups, small fruits, less than 150 gram, and large fruits. And here you can see the relationship between calcium concentration in the endocarp wall and core rot incidence in small fruit. As previously, we saw the relationship that uh, show that the higher the calcium con concentration, the lower the core rot incident. When we examine this exactly the same relationship in large food, you see, we see the exactly the same relationship, but also we see that the probability that large food will be uh, infected or show core rot is higher than small food, which uh, it suits what we uh, uh, expected. As I mentioned, the system is not so comp it's not so simple because more uh, factors are involved. Uh, for example, the number of, of fruit in a cluster. Sometimes, and mainly uh, when the, the, they are, the yield is low, 
uh, fruits are single in a cluster, but sometimes fruits are uh, in, uh, in more than one fruit in a cluster. So, and this is also complicating the system, and I'm not going to, to go into details now. So our first objective was to understand the mechanism of, of the system. And what we found out is that the physiological resistance of heavy yielding trees results from the high concentration that exists in the end of cup wall of their fruit. So uh, can we use this information, this knowledge to develop means to suppress a disease? Obviously, and this is a uh, make, make sense, if we increase the concentration of calcium in the endocarp world, uh, it will enable us to reduce the core rot incidence. So if we be able to do that, it will be means to cope with the disease. Uh, we try to do that and we use two different approaches. The first approach was to uh, try to uh, divert calcium transport from the leaves to the developing fruits. Uh, we uh, chose to do that in two different ways. The first way it was to, by application of abscessic acid, ABA, uh, soon after fruit set. Why we did that? Uh, ABA, whenever it applies, it, it uh, induces closure of the stomata. And we hypothesize that if we close the stomata, more calcium will be diverted and go from the, leaf, from the foliage, from the leaves to the developing fruits. We didn't want to affect uh, photosynthesis a lot, so we applied the uh, ABA only once, soon after fruit set. We did uh, two experiments, and, it, and indeed it worked. In the treatment where we applied ABA, uh, proton, 500 ppm once, as you can see here, uh, the calcium uh, concentration in the end of cup wall was higher than in the untreated control. As you can see, uh, it happened in the, two, in the two experiments. The significance was achieved only in one of them. And the, in a, any case, the difference were not very large. Also, there were differences. When, it, when we tested the effect of this treatment on core rot incidence, we saw that indeed it reduced core rot incidence, but only in one experiment. And, and the effect was not, not very high. In fact, it was not high enough uh, to be used uh, as control measure. So this was the first approach that we used. The second approach was to prune. We pruned new shoots again soon after harvest, and the idea was the same. Uh, we, uh, we assumed that this pruning will allocate more calcium uh, from, from the shoots because we harvested them to the developing fruits. We did, again, two experiments. And in both of them, the treatment uh, was success uh, successful because the calcium concentration in the uh, endocarpal was higher than that we get control. In this case, it was significant in, in, in the two experiments. But again, as you can see, the increase was not, not very high. And accordingly, the reduction in core rot incidence in that case, it was insignificant in the two experiments. And, and in any case, reduction was not very high. Again, not enough to use this uh, technique for managing core rot incidence. So we examined another approach. The other approach was to apply a product that contains calcium directly to the developing fruits. Uh, assuming that this calcium will penetrate, reach the, uh, the carp wall, and then reduce the disease. We did several experiments. Uh, we use commercially viable uh, products. This is one of the experiments. You see that in this experiment, we used uh, four different products. Sprays were applied to the foliage soon after food set. In this experiment, we sprayed seven times, seven times with this product is uh, in weekly intervals. But nevertheless, you see that uh, spraying uh, did not uh, increase the calcium concentration in, in the endocarp, endocarp wall. Calcium did penetrate the fruitlets and then the developing fruits, but it did not, uh, it only for uh, one or two millimeters, and it did not reach the endocarp wall. So it is not surprising 
uh, that uh, this treated will, did not enable us to uh, reduce the core rot incident. So this is where we are now. Uh, and I want to finish with the take home messages. So uh, I showed you that calcium concentration in the endocarp wall governs the response of apple fruit to alternaria. Uh, when calcium concentration is low, we'll receive susceptible response, which is a core rot development. And uh, uh, when calcium concentration is high, uh, we receive a resistant response. Uh, no no core rot or reduced core rot development. So this was the first part of our study. Uh, the second was attempt to uh, reduce the disease. As I showed you, uh, our attempt to enhance calcium concentration in the endocarp wall by uh, uh, der der derivating calcium transport from the leaf to the developing fruit, or by applying products that contain uh, calcium directly to the developing fruit, I showed that this example was successful, but only to some extent. In fact, they were not good enough to be used for disease management. So, unfortunately, an effective treatment for core rot management is still lacking, and dealing with the disease remains a challenge. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>